Hi everyone, I'm Sabri Majid, a photographer and filmmaker. Welcome to the first episode of APS, Architecture and Photography with Sabri. APS is a series where I take you along my journeys of documenting architecture. The purpose of it is to share my experiences, give some advice that can help you, and to ultimately inspire you to get outside and document architecture. Well, I hope so. In this first episode, I will be showing you that photographing architecture shouldn't be daunting, and you don't need loads of complicated equipment to capture good shots. The setup is a run gun style that's very compact and easy on the shoulders. My camera body is a full frame Sony A system and I'm using a 28mm prime lens. It's beneficial to use a prime lens if you want to improve your photography game. You are forced to adapt to the focal length you're using, meaning you need to physically move closer or further from your object in simple terms, rather than zooming in and out with a versatile lens. Moving along, I'm going to take you to London, UK to visit a residential building partially designed by my favourite architect, David Chipperfield. From my understanding, it was a collaboration with Karagusevich Carson Architects. It is Hoxton Press Towers in Hackney. The octagon plan extruded up 16 storeys for one tower and 20 for the other, give it an interesting mass. A discrete balcony has been inset from the facade line, giving it that extra depth of articulation. Its irregular thin brick and stack arrangement also supports the contemporary massing. The grey brick tower helps the 20 storeys not feel too high in its context in comparison to the terracotta brick on the smaller tower. So when I approach photographing architecture, I start with wanting to capture the whole building within its context. Fortunately, with the 28mm lens, I didn't need to walk too far back to include enough information in my composition. Life is a lot easier shooting with a prime lens without a tripod. It's also quicker to adjust your setup and composition on a grey day when you've only got short spells of sun. Situated at the corner of Shoreditch Park, I thought it was an important image to include. It's clear the grey tower is taller and it was easy to show this from ground level. You always want to include neighbouring buildings in the composition so the image illustrates the response to its surroundings. Other objects you could include to communicate the sense of scale could be trees, cars, lampposts and people depending on location. I captured this towards the end of the shoot. I caught a glimpse of evening lighting, which gives a golden glow to the building. This composition showcases the layering of multiple heights and variety in brickwork. There's also use of leading lines in the perspective from the path to the towers. I wasn't too happy with the roadworks interfering with the framing, but as a positive, it gives the image a sense of reality that cities are always undergoing development and maintenance. Once I'm happy with what I've captured contextually, I generally move closer for detail shots to focus on specific architectural elements. Every time the sun creeped out, it changed its impression. Heading across the park to the other side of the building, I wanted to emphasize the light direction coming through the middle of the two towers. I slightly boosted the shadows in the edit to give a subtle comparison. I used a masonry partition between the unit balconies as the prominent vertical which then allowed me to showcase the cantilever soffit ceilings. My favourite part in photographing architecture is for sure the closer detail shots. It allows me to bring the materiality and become more abstract with my images. I wanted to display the use of brick by comparing a closer detail to a distant view. The cantilever balcony design expresses horizontality for the building and the thinner brick laid in a stack arrangement enhances this feature. 
The different use of brick colour also helps to create the contrast I wanted in this image. When I'm editing architecture, I find it's a pain when my verticals aren't parallel. The 28mm lens is not a tilt shift lens, so I had to edit the distortion of my images in Photoshop. People say this technique loses image quality, but I seem to get good results. It's also a much cheaper way to create distortion free images. Maybe if you're planning to print your images large, then you'll see a difference. Nevertheless, it's certainly a good editing skill to have. Like I previously mentioned, this single lens setup is to make life easier for you. And that could be the drive to get you outside and actually doing the photography. Don't let unaffordable equipment put you off creating. When you're ready, I definitely recommend trying out the tilt shift lens because it can improve your images and save you time post editing. This unique building is very tidy and it's a must see, so go check it out. That's the end of episode one. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned some new tips or a refreshing reminder. Go out there and photo some architecture with a prime lens and see what results you get. Check out my Instagram at sabri underscore majid. Here I'll be posting my top nine images from this shoot and you can vote your favorite. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and comment below your thoughts on this building. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.